Throughout history, there have been some masterful pieces of artwork that were so good they became priceless. However, that didn't stop some people from wanting them so badly that they actually bought them for a lot of money. Or at least they thought they did because as it turns out, they got scammed and in a big way. Here are the 10 greatest art forgeries of all time. Number 10 is Albrecht Dürer, Treatment of the Paralytic. Albrecht Dürer was a German Renaissance painter and printmaker who once declared, be cursed plunderers and imitators of the work and talent of others. Well, this ended up being ironic because 125 years after Dürer's death in 1653, Italian Baroque painter Luca Giordano painted his own Dürer, which sold for 600 crowns, that's about $120,000 today. Giordano had the nickname Luke Fapres meaning Luke Hurry in Italian, because he was a fast painter that could paint new works in great artist style in as little as two days. He was never busted, but later admitted he painted this Durer and was sued, although the lawsuit was dismissed because Giordano's painting was declared every bit as good as the original master. In fact, the painting now hangs in the Greek National Gallery in Athens and is attributed to Giordano and not Durer. Well, yeah, I know it's his style, but I did it better, so give me the money! Number 9 is Johannes Vermeer, The Supper at Amos. Johannes Vermeer was a 17th century Dutch painter known for interior scenes. Like many great artists, Vermeer died penniless in obscurity only to be rediscovered later and declared a master. In the aftermath of World War II, the Allied Art Commission came to the studio of unknown Dutch artist Han van Meergeren, who had sold Vermeer's The Supper of Amos to a Nazi. He refused to identify its original owner and was arrested for treason. Facing the firing squad, the Dutchman confessed to duping the art world that he despised by forging the Vermeer and countless other works. During his trial, he painted a brand new Vermeer to prove he was the forger. This one's extra weird because he went from hack to Nazi conspirator to folk hero for swindling the Nazis. That's just confusing. Number 8 is Paul Gauguin the Fawn. Like Vermeer, French post-impressionist Eugene-Henry Paul Gauguin was underappreciated until after his death. Gauguin was a pioneer of symbolism and famed for his depictions of primitive life in French Polynesia. His half-man, half-goat ceramic sculpture was rediscovered and authenticated, sold for millions, and displayed at the Art Institute of Chicago for 10 years. The Institute hailed it as one of their greatest acquisitions as it was thought to be Gauguin's first ceramic and was shown alongside Van Gogh. However, as you probably guessed, the fawn was later revealed to be a forgery when the British Greenlaw family were implicated in the sale of a fake ancient Egyptian antiquity. Scotland Yard traced the fake sculpture from Sotheby's auction house to the mother of master forger Sean Greenlaw who had the whole family involved. Okay mama, you gonna do the painting, daddy you gonna do the sculpting, and I'm gonna sit back and just, just tell y'all what to do. Let's make some money. Number 7 is Ancient Roman Sleeping Eros. In 1496, a marble statue in the Hellenistic tradition of a sleeping Cupid from ancient Rome was sold to the grandnephew of Pope Sixtus IV. However, the cardinal was suspicious that it was fake, so he sent an agent to Florence to investigate the rumors of an unknown artist named Michelangelo di Lodovicio Buonanotti making preliminary sketches and aging the brand new sculpture in acidic earth. The agent came to Michelangelo's studio demanding a refund, but recognized the starving artist's talent and let him keep the money. The Cardinal actually became Michelangelo's first patron, inviting him to Rome to work. Michelangelo went on to become a Renaissance MVP, famed for his ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, the sculpture of David, and of course the name of the pizza-loving Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Number six is Samuel Palmer's Sussex Landscape. 
Samuel Palmer is one of Britain's most celebrated landscape artists, portraying pre-industrial UK and a key figure in the 19th century Romanticism movement. However, the Times of London dropped a bombshell article back in 1970, declaring many of Palmer's most revered and valuable paintings were forgeries. A Cockney house painter named Tom Keating stepped forward to take the credit for the Palmer forgeries, as well as approximately 2,000 other paintings from art heavyweights like Dugas, Modigliani, and Rembrandt. Keating even left time bombs in his fakes, giving clues that they were forgeries to embarrass the art world that dismissed his talents as hacky. Time bomb, I actually used P in the paint, so go ahead and smell that, you're welcome. But his forgeries are now collectible in their own right, and his notoriety landed him his own British TV show in the 1980s, where he taught viewers how to mimic the masters. Oh, crime doesn't pay, it's terrible. Sometimes it does. Don't commit crimes, kids, but sometimes it does. Number five is Emideo Modigliani, Portrait of a Sitting Woman. Emideo Modigliani modernized two of art's great themes, the portrait and the nude painting with elongated mask-like faces inspired by African art. Modigliani's work sells at the same price point as Picasso, north of $100 million, but sales are problematic because he is one of the most forged artists. Hungarian painter Elmir Dohori is considered to be the greatest forger of our time and created over one thousand fakes. He created mostly Modigliani as well as Dugas, Picasso, and Matisse. He was so good he also copied experts' authenticity stamps and falsified documents for provenance, but his long con was discovered long after he amassed a tidy fortune. Dahori later signed the back of his forgeries with the name Elmir and appeared in Orson Welles' 1973 film F is for Fake, a mind-bending document documentary that was also a fake. Kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? Is this video fake? Do I even exist? Oh, losing it! Number four is Claude Monet, Lily's Morning Effect. Claude Monet is one of the great masters whose works defined the Impressionist era. However, John Myatt is a 20th century British artist who could mimic not only Monet, but Renoir, Picasso, and Matisse to near perfection. At first, he signed his own name to paintings so that people knew they were fakes. But in the 1980s, Myatt needed money and was convinced by con artist art dealer John Drew to copy almost 200 great works of art that were sold by the great auction houses of London. And this would have been great, except that Drew's bitter ex-wife tipped off the authorities to their scam, who called Myatt the biggest art fraud of the 20th century. Myatt ended up serving time for fraud, but became a celebrity, appearing on the UK TV show Mastering the Art, and still sells his genuine fakes for plenty of money. Oh, that works? Oh, like I said, this is the real Mona Lisa. Come on, somebody buy it. AdSense is down. Number three is Charles Courtney Curran, Three Women. Charles Courtney Curran was an early American Impressionist answer to Renoir, known for his masterful portraits of women in nature. Mark Landis was not a well-known artist, but a failed art gallerist whose greatest accomplishment was restoring others' art. However, Landis was also a schizophrenic who desperately wanted to be recognized by the art world, so he concocted a scheme to forge great American masters like Curran. He painted right over digital reproductions using materials he bought at Home Depot and then donated the works to American museums, universities, and institutions. Landis also used elaborate alter egos like a priest driving a big red Cadillac. Hello everybody, God be with you, I'm forging artwork. What? I didn't say that. And he did all that until 2007 when some museums examined his donations and declared them forgeries. But since Landis never accepted money or tax credits, he technically didn't break the law and nothing happened. But he did make it onto a top 10 list. I didn't do too bad. Not bad. Number two is Max Ernst, The Forest. 
Max Ernst was a prolific early 20th century German artist and provocateur, credited as one of the founders of Dada and Surrealism. Unfortunately, gullible art critic and Ernst expert Werner Spies validated The Forest, which sold for $7 million in 2006 and hung in the Max Ernst Museum. But the painting was a fake, created by German Wolfgang Beltraki, whose forgery gang put four $48.6 million worth of fake art into circulation. He claimed many of the paintings were from his wife's grandmother's art collection, which would have been amazing except nobody has that much art, man. But karma eventually caught up with Beltraki when one of his forgeries was carbon tested and revealed titanium dioxide white, which was unavailable when Ernst painted. See, there's no fool in the system. Except there is, and eventually you'll get caught. But eventually, there's no fooling the system. And number one is Heinrich Kampendonk, Landscape with Horses. In 2011, actor and comedian Steve Martin was also scammed by that rascally Beltraki gang when he purchased Heinrich Kampendonk's Landscape with Horses. Kampendonk was a lesser known German Dutch modernist whose work was deemed degenerate by the Nazis. Yeah, that's ironic. Oh, you're degenerate. You're a bad, bad man. <laughs> the famed funny man bought the painting that was supposedly painted in 1915 for $850,000 only to discover later that he bought a fake painting and resold it through Christie's auction house at a loss of $500,000. Just a quick side note, who has $850,000 just lying around to be like, you know what? I think I'm gonna buy that. I'm, just, I'm gonna go buy it. Although he was of course upset, Martin credited the forgers as quite clever for creating long provenance fake labels in a series of dummied and dated photographs of Beltraki's wife posing next to the paintings from her grandfather. So that was the 10 greatest art forgeries of all time. And if you enjoyed this, remember to give it a big thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications by clicking the bell beside the subscribe button so that you never miss a thing because I release new videos all the time. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Or will I? Is this video even real? <laughs> Bye!